Say you're staffed on an urgent deliverable, which needs to be completed by the end of the day. You spend hours doing your research. But there's no time to draft an opinion because the client wants a quick call to understand the legal position. Your job now is to brief your senior for this call. Imagine the pressure, the stakes, the difficulty in explaining a complex point of law in under 10 minutes. This might sound like an exaggeration, but it really isn't. Lawyers are put in such positions all the time, whether that's at a client meeting or discussions with counterparties. Thus, being able to talk properly is essential to being an effective lawyer, even if you're not arguing in court. In my experience, I've come across certain basic mistakes that many students and early career lawyers make, like lack of a clear communication, failing to break down the law, repeating things endlessly. Before deep diving into this, Let's clarify an important misconception. You don't have to be a great public speaker to be an effective communicator. If you are a debater, a mooter, or a mediator, that's great. But being skilled at these activities does not necessarily mean that you will be able to interact with clients and colleagues in a business meeting. Some of the best communicators that I've seen have no prior public speaking experience. How can this happen? It's simple. In a debate, things like flair, rhetoric, and argumentation matter significantly. In a professional environment, what matters is whether you can clearly explain the key points to someone else. Improving at verbal communication is often made to feel like rocket science. But I can tell you that there's no mystery to this. Becoming a better oral communicator is simply a function of understanding common mistakes that you are likely to make and knowing how to avoid those mistakes. When talking to someone in a professional setting, the first thing you need to focus on is the conceptual clarity. If you don't understand the facts of a case, the applicable law, or some other important detail, you will not be able to explain the same to a third party. Therefore, you need to be completely clear yourself before you even start talking. There's a popular quote attributed to the former US President Harry S. Truman, which goes, if you can't convince them, confuse them. For lawyers, that's terrible advice. Your job as a legal professional is to ensure that the client understands what you are saying and is able to act on your advice. If the client is lost or confused, that's your problem to fix. Since lawyers often think of themselves as professional talkers, they have a tendency to provide too much information. When a client asks a simple question, inexperienced lawyers may explain more than what is required. They may even look at this as an opportunity to prove their competence. While using one's knowledge to the client's benefit is great, there's a thin line between explaining what's relevant and talking too much. If you provide extra information, the client may lose track of what's happening. The crucial part of your advice may get muddled in all the superfluous details. My final advice would be to build confidence. You'll be amazed at how much difference a small dose of self-belief can make while interacting with someone. If you are not the type who feels comfortable in such situations, here are some ideas that you can use to improve your confidence. In the fast-paced world of corporate law, tomorrow's legal leaders need to be more than just traditional expertise. Introducing the LLM in Corporate and Financial Law, a groundbreaking program brought to you by Jindal Global Law School in partnership with Upgrad. 
Designed for the legal professionals of tomorrow, this innovative blended learning program combines academic rigor with real-world application. Don't miss out. Click the link in the description to elevate your career with the LLM in corporate and financial law. First, practice in low pressure environments such as with friends or colleagues. It surprises me that people spend such little time practicing before interviews, client calls and discussions with counterparties. The maxim practice makes perfect has become rather cliche. But I really can't stress upon this enough. If you're underconfident, nothing helps like practice. The second thing you can do is observe what seniors do right. Whether it's someone in college or a partner at a law firm, you can always learn from what's working for others and what mistakes they seem to be making. And the third thing that you can do is to slow down. When people are nervous, they often try to rush through their material in an attempt to end the misery as quickly as possible. But if you step back, take a few deep breaths, gather your thoughts and proceed calmly, you'll notice a marked improvement in your performance. In the 2017 case of Justice K.S. Puttaswamy v. Union of India, the Supreme Court held that privacy was a fundamental right, guaranteed by the Constitution of India. This right stems from Article 21 of the Constitution, which is the right to life and personal liberty. However, the fundamental right to privacy is not an absolute right. It is subject to reasonable restrictions. The court will look at three factors when determining the reasonableness of a restriction. Whether the restriction is legal, whether it is for a legitimate aim such as national security, and whether the restriction is proportionate to the objects sought to be achieved. The government is also currently working on a robust data protection law to safeguard data privacy.